All right, everyone, hello and welcome again. Um, I've waited a couple of minutes for a few more of you to come on in. So now that I see that we've uh, grown in attendance, I'm gonna kick off the webinar properly. So again, thank you all for joining today's uh, case study webinar focused on automating staff processes. Basically, today's webinar is gonna comprise three parts. There's a case study exploration with Surrey's Bishop's Gate School and it's uh, Compliance HR and Information Manager, Sarah Island, and we'll speak to her soon. Uh, there'll then be a demonstration of how to digitally create a staff form and then build an associated approval workflow through the Operu platform. And then we're gonna have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. My name is Lachlan James, I'm Operu's Head of Marketing. I'm also joined by our Southern UK Sales Director, Tom Owen. Tom, how are you this snowy afternoon? <laughs> I'm very good, thanks Lachlan. Yes, it's uh, it's chucking it down in Essex, there's a middle of a snowstorm, which is presumably pretty different from, um, from Melbourne, where you're sitting at the moment. Yes, uh, I, I'm not going to brag, but it was a uh, balmy 32 degrees today, so it is a little <laughs> bit different. But I'm hoping you're all braving the weather all right. Um, before we um, before we get started properly, just a little bit of housekeeping. Now, as attendees, you are all set to mute to help with audio quality. However, if you have questions during the webinar, there is a question box in the corner of your screen. So please enter your questions into that box and we'll answer questions at the end of the presentation and follow up afterwards if we run out of time to get to all of your queries. Also on that note, we are recording this session, so everyone who registered will be sent a link to the recording within the next week. But first, I know there's a real mix of people on this call from seasoned Opera users um, to schools and Matt's checking out the platform for the very first time. So. Very quickly, I'm going to give you a little bit of context about Operu and what we do. Basically, Operu is a school operations platform. So Operu is helping thousands of schools and other organisations around the world to eliminate slow, expensive and repetitive paper-based tasks. Basically, Operu enables schools to save time and resources by automating operational tasks and workflows that then you know, increase staff productivity, uh, parental engagement, and student participation as well. And basically our goal is to empower schools and maths to use every minute and every pound possible uh, on student education, rather than wasting resources on operational inefficiencies. This is a bit of a bird's eye view about any sort of um, workflow or process or form that you can basically go ahead and automate inside of Operu. And this is kind of what that general workflow looks like, if that makes sense. You start with you know, a template or a, a form of what you want to do or customise that bit of communication, however you need. You can add an approval workflow, you know, at the beginning or the end of a stage, depending on who it needs to go through, whatever it is that you're sending out in terms of a, you know, a request, collecting data, um, you know, distributing a form, anything like that. You can also pick really specifically which types of audiences you want to send it to, you know, be it, you know, staff, students or parents, and then based on different types of data you have about each of those groups within the system. Um, you know, you can receive responses really quickly because it is a completely cloud-based, um, you know, digital platform, and it's also on uh, mobile, um, and that's on any platform and any device. So you can get responses back really quickly, particularly from your parent and staff communities. You can also then trigger follow-up actions based on any responses you do receive, if that makes sense. You can automate what happens next as well. We can then, of course, securely collect you know, any consent, payment, medical information, or any other data that's you know collected and that's required through that process. We've got automated reminders to uh, make sure you can follow up stragglers without having to do the legwork yourself. And of course, you can then track, analyze, and act on those responses in one uniform setting. So there's a bird's eye view that gives you a bit of an understanding about how any process really works um, in Operu. And hopefully that'll give you some good context when we dive into this case study as well. So basically, as I said, Operu is a school operations and productivity platform that digitizes and streamlines all your slow, repetitive, paper-based or disconnected processes under one roof. So that's from you know, multi-language school forms and consents for, for parents and students to staff forms and approval workflows, which of course today's session is gonna have a really detailed look at. Um, you know, parent communications, payments and ordering, end-to-end uh, -end school trip management, um, uh, you know, as well as medical data collection and verification. There's some of the really strong use cases within the platform, although of course there are many more than that. 
And then, you know, really the key question as well, you know, why would you bother streamlining and automating your manual paper-based or disparate processes? And really the benefits are for you, know, you to see on the screen here. And ultimately the end game is really simple. Again, we're all about helping schools and maths to stop wasting resources on operational inefficiencies so that every pound and every minute possible uh, can be focused on student education. And to emphasise that point, a lot of you may not know, but independent research kind of indicates and estimates that, you know, our, our, the average UK school spends around, you know, £10,000 on processing paper forms throughout um, the school year. And that's just the paper forms. There's lots of other things to do with operationally running a school that go along with that as well. But, you know, digitising and automating school forms and the associated processes ensures you're not wasting limited budgets on repetitive manual tasks. And this is exactly what Operu is around to do. But that's enough about us. That's a bit of context that hopefully helps um, to understand the rest of today's presentation. What I really want to do now is actually get into this case study that we're here um, to talk about today. Uh, and like I said, we, we're talking about Bishop's Gate and we're looking at how they've automated, you know, its, it's internal staff processes and external communications in one digital operations platform, keeping its school community safe, informed and productive at all times, even during COVID induced remote learning. But of course, lots of the things they've been able to streamline are going to be really beneficial a long way past the times that we currently live in. But on that note, um, I'd like to welcome Sarah to the call. And Sarah, if you'd just be able to quickly introduce yourself and your role and tell us a little bit about Bishopsgate. Hello, yes, I am Sarah Almond. Um, my lengthy title, as you've already said, Lachlan, Compliance HR and Information Manager. Um, Bishopsgate is a prep school near Windsor in Surrey, and we have about 370 children on roll. Um, my role started out as a compliance thing, but has actually grown and grown over time. Absolutely, and I think we're all going to get a sense of how that's grown uh, in a minute. So uh, I want to dive sort of straight into, I guess, what started everything for, for, for you and Bishopsgate School. So when you were looking at some of the challenges that you were facing, particularly in regards to staff processes, what I'd like to understand is what, what ignited your search for um, a, a solution to the current challenges that you faced? What, what was it that kind of instigated that? So um, it started out very simply <clears throat> as a chance meeting with Tom at an exhibition where we were talking about trip management. And at that time, um, seems unimaginable now, but we were running regular trips with the children to France and the management of that was problematic. So Tom came into Bishopsgate to talk to us about that. And I realised immediately that um, Operu could do an awful lot more as he told me more about um, the way it's set up. And I'm slightly biased probably because I say my chief role at that time was compliance <clears throat> and I was just expanding the HR role and spending so much time on internal communications and chasing um, for information um, and sign-ups from staff that I thought actually Operu can save me a huge amount of time here. No, that, that makes a lot of sense and you talked about saving a huge amount of time so just for a little bit of context so people understand I guess the journey that you've been on what was life like before you implemented Operu when you tried to take things you know digital and streamline a lot of those you know staff facing processes what were you what were you doing to manage all that? So when I joined the school, everything pretty much was done on paper and um, we had just started exploring Google Forms. So um, Google actually was quite new to me then as well. Um, so I started using Google Forms to collect information. So, for example, um, annual sign ups to policy documents and so on. Um, which previously, as I say, had been done on paper right up to my arrival. I took over and started doing it on Google Sheets. But at the end of the day, it still involved me physically chasing staff to sign up to whatever piece of compliance information I was after, um, whether that be in person or by telephone, by email. Um, it involved time and thought and tracking on my part. Absolutely, and that makes some sense. And, and just quickly, I know that um, whilst we're going to focus a lot on those staff processes, um, and that was, you know, a, a, a big, a big part of what you've concentrated on, you know, sort of over the last twelve months. I also understand that, um, you know, you're applying Operu, I guess, externally when you're thinking about parent engagement and communications. Can can you talk 
to me a little bit about some of the challenges you were having in that space? Yes, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> the reason that we we culminated in in taking Opera on was because I'd started a project looking at our external communications with parents. We had an app at that time that we were unhappy with because it was just too complicated and too fiddly. Um, so I was looking for a solution, and the solution that I came to in the end of the day was that Opera Roo would do if you like all the heavy lifting in terms of communication so all of the forms and collecting of information and then we took on a, a very simple app um, as an interface with parents um, through which they would access um, other information um, and as it happens that app didn't work out and Operu really stepped up much more than we expected because we're now doing all of our external communications through Operu, all of our emailing and SMSing. Look, that, that's really good to hear and I'll, I'll just pause there for a minute because I, I, in, in, in the next section I'll, I'll get you to talk a little bit about being able to consolidate all this data sort of in one place and some of the benefits of that. So let me on that note transition to the next section where we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, you know, we've kind of set the scene for those challenges and now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the solutions, um, you know, you brought to bear, you know, upon those challenges that you had. So I guess when, 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 you're, when you're thinking about addressing those, what what were you know which of Opera's sorts of features or functions have you found you know most useful in your journey to date when you're I guess particularly thinking about those staff processes? So the automated chasing without question is one of my favorite features because that saves so much time. Um, <clears throat> but also the sorting of um, staff and pupils into groups as a result of forms um, that we collect from them. So mm. um, if, the fact that that is done live, if you like, makes a huge difference to us. So for example, if you take an example of sorting out groups that are going to do an after school activity, if I get the parents to sign up through a form, I can then sort the children into groups from there, which will always update as parents complete the form, change the form or a new parent completes it. So being able to have that live window on the data is is really incredibly useful and applies the same in the um, staff side, because if I ask the staff to sign up to something, I've always got a live view of where I'm at with that. No, absolutely. That 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, and we'll, we'll get we'll get back to that sort of trigger being able to, you know, send people subsequent forms and consents or things like that based on answers they give in a minute. But um, I'm really glad you pointed that out because you've you've got a really good example around that. Not actually in staff um, uh, processes, but uh, to do with uh, COVID safe practices. But I'll I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, what I'm also interested to do, just to stick with that staff focus at the moment, can you talk a little bit about you know some of the most common, I guess, you know, staff types and you know approval workflows that you've you've streamlined in 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 Opera? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so the first one probably would be the recruitment side. So I've made a couple of public forms which sit on our website, um, which replicate our old application form. So when we're advertising roles, people can fill in. Um, a live online form through Operu to um, apply for the role. Um, that then comes to me as an approval request. I'm able to approve that, which sends a message back to the um, person um, acknowledging receipt of their um, application. And then as we go through the recruitment, I'm able to do all of my onboarding with new staff, which has been enormously useful because there's a lot of training and policy reading and, and information collecting that has to be done during the onboarding process. And I've done all of that now through Operu. So as I say, it automatically chases and collects for me and then I can just download the information. Um, I'm also using it at the moment for CPD management. So we mm -hmm. do regular bits of training with um, existing staff. So I'm putting out those requests on Operu. Um, I use it for all the HR aspects that you might imagine. So staff absence, return to work forms, um, requests for absence, um, performance management is a huge one, which um, my mm. performance has been transformed by use of Operu. 
Um, and we're also running lateral flow testing on Operu now. So the bookings for that happen through Operu so that the school nurse knows who she's got coming to each of her testing sessions. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. Um, and I just want to come back to one thing that you mentioned, because you talked about Google Forms before. And then you also mentioned um, being able to uh, put what you talked about as public forms on your website, um, which are you know powered through Operu. Can you just explain for everyone listening what a public form is through Operu and, and why it's more useful than a Google form? And I guess I'm particularly thinking about you know, that tracking and analysis of data and, and, and around that sort of aspect. So can you talk through that just quickly? Sure. So a public form is one that somebody can complete even though they're outside of our organisation. So they're not registered on our Operu. Mm -hmm. um, they can complete a form by um, receiving a link. So obviously the link's embedded in our website in this particular instance. Um, but once they've completed the form, we've then captured their data if you like insofar as I can manage people in groups in just the way as I could if they were internal. Um, so the next step down the line will be when we um, do all of our admissions forms for pupils that way as well um, and the same thing will apply. People will be able to apply through filling in the online form um, for a place for their child. We then capture the data and we can feed them into Operu um, through our MIS system once they've registered formally um, and the, the, the process then is continuous. It's much more elegant and, um, and current to be doing all of that online rather than the traditional paper in the post route which is what we've done to date. No that makes a lot of sense and just quickly before I move on to uh, the uh, next section. Um, just for everyone on the call, uh, the uh, MIS system that you use at your school currently is—is is that—is that Sims? Is that correct? It is. It is Sims. Yeah. Yep. Just for everyone on the call wondering uh, what that integration was, uh, it, it is Sims. We do integrate with other MISs as well, but uh, we are talking about Sims in this case. All right. Fantastic. Let me plow on to the next section, which I think is fascinating. Um, obviously uh, the surprise. So uh, no one really knew what was going to happen over the last 12 months with um, COVID because of course no one had that crystal ball and of course you're in that uh, boat as well. Um, and I also know that you didn't start you know, engaging with Opera to help address COVID related processes but you, you have done a lot in this space. Um, so you know from a technical point of view and we just talked about it then I think you know Sims integration for medical data and Operu's trigger actions were particularly important here. Can you talk us through what you've done here to help keep your school community safe? Sure. So um, we realised fairly early on, once the schools were back, but everybody else, if you like, was still on lockdown, that we needed to have an up-to-date recording system for which of our pupils and which of our families were potentially being affected by COVID, um, not least because our academic team were saying that they needed more insight um, on which pupils were potentially going to be out because of COVID related matters and would therefore need online learning whilst the rest of the pupils were in school. Um, mm. So at that time we already had the uh, um, pupil absence notification form on Operu where parents could complete that um, to say that their child was off sick. So I added a few questions to it. I added it in, in the first instance, I added three questions about the primary um, symptoms of COVID. So temperature, cough, <clears throat> and if the parents gave the appropriate answer that indicated their child had symptoms, I set up some triggers to cascade information to the academic team to say that this child was going to be off for a while, potentially. The parent also would then get a further form sent to them requesting that they got uh, a COVID test done. Um, and following the results of the COVID test, then they would get a message 
um, either saying, okay, you're going to be isolating for a while and um, here is how your child will be able to access work if they're well enough to do it, or they got another form saying, okay, negative result, please let us know when your child will be returning to school. Um, and as we got that up and running, I realised that there were a few other criteria which I added on later, um, the begin at the absence notification stage. One is whether they're absent because they've had a track and trace message about a contact outside the home. And secondly, um, at the time when we were allowed to travel, I also added in one for dealing with quarantine on return from a country where quarantining was necessary. Um, so we could cover all of the reasons that a, a pupil would be off school for COVID related reasons um, and communicate that throughout school. So the medical team would know, but also the academic team would know. So we'd have a, um, a joined up response to um, the pupil needing to learn from home. Um, and also on, a, on another level, I have to report to the DfE every day um, with statistics about um, which pupils and staff have uh, COVID issues. And um, I was able to build some groups off of this spreadsheet um, so that um, I can see at a glance which pupils are home with symptoms, which pupils are at home because they've tested positive, which pupils have got a household member with symptoms, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a huge amount of work there and a huge amount to unpack. Um, thank you for taking us through that. Just for everyone uh, tuning in, uh, essentially, the, the whole series of trigger actions and the workflow that results from that um, that Sarah was talking to is the slider transition to that you can see now. So this is all built uh, in Opera and basically the workflow contains four sort of programmatic chains of responses and 28 individual trigger actions, which is pretty amazing, um, depending on the different ways in which COVID symptoms were reported uh, in Bishop Bishop's Gates uh, initial absenteeism form. So. Um, because it's so extensive, it's a little bit hard to read here, but we will be sharing a copy um, after after the session as well. Um, just before we go to um, and we talk about some of the um, results, um, I just want to flick back here um, very quickly um, because the third point on here um, really relates back to staff processes again that we're sort of focusing on today. So I understand um, you've also been um, digitising sort of the process at to be able to conduct uh, lateral flow testing for staff. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, so um, when the DfE introduced uh, the requirement for us to lateral flow test all of our staff, <clears throat> we needed to um, build in appointment times, if you like, because the school nurse is um, very busy looking after the key worker children. Um, so we needed to schedule appointments for that. So I'm able to send out an OPERU form, which I refresh weekly um, with appointment times um, in her available slots and staff can book into that. Um, the appointment times enable me to set a limit on each appointment for how many people she can fit into that slot. So that works perfectly. She's never overbooked um, by um, people uh, wanting a um, test when she's not available and we've now been able to modify that further as the government have said that we need to test people twice a week under certain circumstances. Um, so all of that is managed through Operu and the nurse can just um, open up her screen and see which group of people um, she's testing at any given time. Well I'm hoping that um, your school nurse is uh, yes feeling a little less strain in at least one aspect of what I'm sure is a really busy time. So that's that's a really clever use case, I think, um, as well. So um, lots there to unpack as well, but let's uh, move on to the results sort of section. Um, and I guess when it comes to results, uh, I, I know there's quite a number, including you know the summaries we can see on the screen now. Um, I guess generally speaking, I know you're, you're experiencing significantly faster and stronger response rates across the board for, for your sorts of um, you know, form completions and your staff processes. W what are some of the results you're, you're most proud of? So um, there's a couple that spring immediately to mind. One staff, one, one parent. So on the staff side, as I mentioned earlier about appraisals, um, I remodeled the appraisal format a couple of times um, it's a very difficult balance because obviously teaching staff have got a lot on their plate, particularly at the moment. 
um, and trying to make the appraisal process less onerous, but to, to have value for everybody is difficult. And consequently, I have ended up, um, when I was trying to run it on Google Forms, um, endlessly chasing to get the appraisal processes completed within the time frame. So I've broken up the staff into, into groups that, and they have half a term each to, um, to complete their process. Um, and I last year was never getting them all done in the half a term. By the end of the year, I had a huge stack of people still outstanding. Um, so this year, for the first time, I was able to run that on Operu. So I sent out the trigger um, emails from Operu, trigger forms from Operu to say, your appraisal starts this half term, please complete it in an X amount of time. Um, and um, they did amazingly because they were chased i believe <laughs> I believe that's ultimately the difference um so for the first time we had all of the appraisals completed in the half term that they were designated for so that has been fabulous to make such a difference to me and and in fact to all the staff who are getting their appraisals done on time um uh, and, and you, you didn't even have to be the bad you didn't even have to be the bad guy we're offering no. as a bad guy for you. You just you you were able to sit there and blame the system, which is fantastic. But no, look, um, I I, I, I can imagine how frustrating it is to spend time chasing, um, you know, and uh, to have that automated um, and and done on time uh, is is really good. And then I'm pretty sure uh, me interjecting there, I got in the way of your second example, which I'm pretty sure was back on the sort of external sort of parent communication side of things around COVID and going remote again. So talk to me about that. Yes, it was. Um, so, um, as I'm sure everybody will remember, our last um, trigger to go um, to remote learning came from the Prime Minister with less than 24 hours notice, um, mm -hmm. which left us, left all schools in a very difficult situation. But one of the issues that we were addressing was that we wanted to collect consent again from all the parents for live um, online teaching. Um, and um, in the past, I've collected consents again using Google Forms and, and never, ever got 100% back, to be honest, in spite of a lot of time ex spent on chasing. Um, mm. So this time, of course, I could do it on Operu. So I sent out an Operu form um, the night before we were due to start with online face-to-face -face teaching teaching and um, requesting consent from the parents and to my astonishment the next day was able to provide all the teaching staff with a hundred percent consent from the entire parent body um, which you know just took a, a load of pressure off everybody um, that we knew that we could press on ahead with the remote teaching that we'd planned Absolutely. And look, in, in a really you know time critical situation, I'm I'm really glad that you were able to create a create a solution for that. So that's really good. Uh, speaking of pressing on, uh, I'm going to press on to the last section of our sort of case study discussion before I hand over to Tom to go through a little bit of a live demonstration. Um, so you've achieved a lot of really good outcomes. What what I'm curious about is what's your next form or process that you want to automate in, in Operu? What are you looking to next? So um, the biggest one for me, I think, is pre-admissions. I want to get that going properly. So to have um, parents expressing interest on a public form and then to take that right through registration um, all the way up to admission. Um, mm. <clears throat> so I, uh, I'm, I've built out the forms for that and we just need to start implementing that. But I will also be returning to school trip management, I hope, one day, um, which was, of course, the, the reason that we got involved with Opera in the first instance, but, and I haven't been able to really explore ever since. Um, <clears throat> and I will also be returning to extracurriculars. So we had a brief moment in the middle of this year where we were able to have some external club providers to do after school clubs um, for the children. And in the in the time that we had them, they were really impressed with Operu. They really found being able to register the kids in their clubs on Operu so much easier than anything they'd done before. And from our point of view, with booking the extracurricular activities and managing the groups and having those live, as I mentioned earlier, 
that was really transformative. So I'm looking forward to going back to doing that as well. Fantastic. So look, plenty for you to um, <laughs> get on with as well after life returns a little bit to, to normal. Just before we pass over to Tom, I guess just finally, do, do you have any sort of advice um, for other Opera, you know, Opera users looking to replicate your success to date? Um, well, I think it's just really about thinking about the things that you find most time consuming and starting there. So for me, it was a real light bulb moment in that first conversation with Tom, all the amount of time I spent on chasing up various administrative things that I could have automated. That made such a difference to me. Um, and then obviously, as I've gone on and used the system to build the COVID workflow, I realized that automation could go so much further as well. I mean, the the, um, the work workflow that you saw in the diagram, <clears throat> I built really because I couldn't keep any more of it in my head. So uh, having worked <laughs> out what we needed to do, I needed a diagrammatic representation of what it was I'd done. So, um, you know, thinking about all those automated things and, and what you could do to relieve time burden, um, but also, um where you need to see live information i think that's really critical as well so as i say club booking and so on being able to see who's signed up when to what um that's really made a, a difference to us no i think that's really really good advice you know starting with what's time sensitive and what matters to be able to view and analyze in real time and and starting with the greatest need as you said the thing that's going to give you the biggest value first because you can't do everything at once and i think that makes the most sense to start where the greatest need is so Sarah, thank you so much for having a really informative chat with us i think that was really good i enjoyed the chat um now at uh at this point tom i am going to hand over to you for a bit of a live demonstration. And I think you're gonna basically show us a staff leave request and going through the, you know, the process of creating that form, building out the associated approval workflow, and then you know what it looks like to submit and then approve that request. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lachlan. I'm just gonna show my screen and make sure everyone can see that. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, thank you, Lachlan. Um, um, and I, I wanna say a big thank you to, to Sarah as well. The, Bishopsgate School has got some fantastic and varied uses of Operu to solve a huge range of different operational challenges, some which might have been expected um, and a lot which which haven't been over the last year. Um, and that perhaps points to Operu being a very flexible platform that you can do lots of different things with it. But exactly what you've said, Lachlan, I, I, what I want to cover today is this, this idea of a staff leave request form and how that might work um, through the system. I also want to show a few examples of what the system looks like in reality and, and show some of the different things which, which schools are using it for. Um, let's come up here and let's, uh, let's start with those staff who aren't even at your school yet. Sarah mentioned this in detail earlier, um, but Opera's public forms can be used to collect that data from anyone who's not currently in your school. So they're used to sign up for open days, they're used to make donations, and in the case of Bishopsgate School, um, they, they're used for staff forms to manage inquiries and job applications and that process. So this is an example of an Opera public form. Let's go full screen. Um, so I can access this through a URL link, through a QR code, so you can embed it into social media, you can put it onto your website, anything like that. And this is just a form which I've put together as an example um, with some information at the top and then a series of other questions underneath, position, name, contact details. But this form, like all forms in Operu, can be completely customized to your needs. So it's your branding, your wording, your questions that you want to ask. Um, and then, as well as customising that form, you can then customise the process which follows it. In this example, I've got to the bottom of the page and we see that when this is submitted, it's going to go to HR for review. This is an example of a workflow. We mentioned workflows earlier. It could be just to one person or something complex with different levels of approval going through different people, different departments. 
When this is submitted, in this case, the HR team get an email to say that they've got a new form to review and they can approve or reject that application and it can go on to the next stage. And then you can use other things like groups, triggers, those sorts of things. As an example of that, as the person filling in this form, I get something as well. Um, this is um, into Gmail. This is an email which has been sent through to me, a really simple email receipt. This is done using one of those triggers. As a reminder, triggers mean you can take specific actions based on specific bits of data. In this example, I've completed the form, so I get a receipt. It might be that I've put in details of a referee or something more complex like that. So that referee automatically gets an email directing them to another public form, which they have to complete. It's all about managing data flow through your school, but also managing that external data flow as well. We're going to explore triggers and workflows in more detail as we build our staff leave process a little bit later on. But for now, hopefully you've seen that you can collect and distribute information from prospective staff. But what happens when those members of staff then join us? As a member of staff, I am sent a unique email. I click on that email and I'm into the Operu system. This is important because if you're using products like Google Forms or other form based product, products, you need to consider how you know the person filling in the information is correct and the impact of this on your GDPR compliance. The view I'm in is Operu Central. From here, I can access any forms or information a school wants to send me. This is available, as Lockton said, right at the start on any device, 24 seven with 24 seven support. So it doesn't matter if a member of staff is using their phone, their tablet, their laptop, their desktop, like I am at the moment, or a mix of all four, they have access to the same interface and information, whether they are in school or whether they're working remotely. I have certain requests which I need to complete. We can see at the top here, I've got a variety of different requests. I've got a DBS confirmation, some fire safety training, and I've got a health and safety policy. I'm gonna come in and complete my health and safety policy first. Again, completely customized to what you need these different things to be. In this example, I'm gonna be sent to a YouTube video, which I've got to uh, watch for our health and safety policy. Then I need to download and review that document. When I'm happy with that, I can accept, and it's remembered my signature from last time, but I need to sign to say I've done that. Thinking about Sarah's experience earlier on, this is then updated live in the administration side of Operu. So you can see which staff have done which things within the system. Let's head on to our fire safety training module. Again, this was an example. Sarah used signing up to um, individual training modules, signing up to things which are happening in school or online. And as Operu, when new staff join Operu as part of their onboarding process, we go through training on Operu. So we dive into safeguarding in various other areas um, through the Operu system. In this example, I'm got a link out to a module which I need to complete and then we've got a series of other uh, you might want a series of questions based on that module so I've got to ask answer which of these is not a high risk fire area let's say the library I'm going to say the training is complete I haven't got any other comments but you'll see that some of these items are marked with a little red dot some of them aren't so to complete that form I have to complete everything with our little red dot. This means you're not getting half completed bits of uh, paperwork back to you. Everything has to be completed before it moves through your school. I'm not going to enter any comments, but I am going to accept that I've completed this and submit our response. Now, automatically, because I've completed fire safety training module 1.3, I've been sent fire safety training module 1.4. It's another example of a trigger. Because you've completed one piece of data, you automatically get that second piece of data. And we have triggers and workflows and lots of other smart uses of data to make sure that people are getting the right information at the right time. <clears throat> now, the final form which I've got is a DBS form, part of my onboarding. This is quite a big form, but you can see I filled out 
a couple of bits of information from it. I'm going to come in here and change my forename. If I wanted to save this form for later and come back and complete that information, I can. So I can scroll down to the bottom here and I can save that form. It's saved for me to complete at a later date. And that's still going to be sitting up there as something I need to respond to. Anything which we're asked to respond to or anything which is sent out to me as that member of staff who needs to respond to something, I get an email. I click on that email and I'm into the system. If I don't click on that email or if I don't come in and complete that item you've asked me to respond to, that's when the reminders kick in. At a frequency defined by you, Sarah will say how important this was within, uh, within Bishopsgate School. But in this example, every two days, I'm getting a reminder that I need to come in here and complete that form. Every two days until I come and do it. Let the system do that chasing for you. Underneath my requests, I have a couple of approvals. These are workflows where I need to either approve or reject the submissions as they go through the school. So let's have a look at what I've been sent. I've got a software purchase request form. Someone has a member of staff has filled in that purchase request form and at some stage in the workflow, it's come to me. So if I come in to approve or reject this, I can see, first of all, um, once it comes to my stage in the workflow, I get an email asking me to go in and approve or reject that. In the same way as the other forms, if I don't complete that, I'm going to get reminders sent through to me that I still need to come and approve or reject that item. I can see it's been approved by, uh, by this person's line manager and we've got some notes. It was agreed at the previous budget meeting. It's come to me as the school business manager uh, within Tom's school and I can come down and see the information which has been filled in. I can then approve or reject that. I'm going to approve it and say, looks great. And then I'll save. And if there were further stages in our workflow or further triggers which needed to happen off that, they can. But for this stage, it's gone through. Now, I had one more request in there. We've now jumped into our form library, but my approvals are here in my form library as well. So I've got a staff travel ticket request. I'm the only person in this stage, so I can see those details. And if I wanted to, I can come down and reject. If I reject this information, if I reject that, a message goes back to the person who filled it out with the notes of my re rejection. And if that member of staff wants to open that form out again, change some information and then push it back through the same workflow, they can. So one of the examples which um, Sarah flagged really early on was about trip management. If I've, ha if I've completed a trip management form and it's gone through a workflow, which has then been uh, gone through various approvals and it's rejected for, let's say the example of the date happens to be a day when four other trips are going out, so the date is no good. Rather than having to complete all of that form again, I can open up the form, change the date to a different date and then go through that process again. So I've now come in here and completed my requests. Most of the forms we see for staff in the schools we work with are not pushed out to staff. You need to complete this and we're going to chase you until you do complete it. Most of the forms are instead more ad hoc forms which need to be completed as and when you need them. Many of these then have workflows and triggers associated with them. So I'm now in our form library, which is up here. Um, I'm in the form library and I can see lots of different examples of these kind of forms. We've got a whole set of instant reports and student logs, which I will look at in a bit more detail in a second. But then we've got further information like finance forms, HR forms for all sorts of different things. CPD was mentioned earlier on, applying for leave, um, public duty forms, lots of different IT forms. So logging IT and network issues, logging facilities and damage, um, uh, damage issues around the school and lots of things around trip management. 
But as I said earlier, it's designed to be really flexible. Any staff forms or any staff processes which you have, you can put through the system and move them through a school, through a workflow, through that different setup. Each one of these forms does have that unique URL. So many of our schools will publish these links to these forms on a staff intranet, just to make it e as easy as possible for staff to find the right form. Before I head over to our admin screen and show you how we can create one of these processes, I'm just gonna head back to Opera Central. Um, just to highlight one other thing, which is our groups. Our groups are down at the bottom of the screen here. We spoke about trip management earlier on, Sarah mentioned it, we've got our trip management forms in there. But whether it's trip management or extracurricular activities, or just as a member of staff, I'm looking after the year seven playground and you want to give me access to specific forms or duty of care information, you can do that through Operoo. So let's take the example of our 2021 ski trip. This is collated together in something called event docs. Event docs pulls together any documentation you want to pull together for a certain group, could be a, drip, gr could be a trip, could be an extracurricular club. But those event docs could be the uh, risk assessment for the trip. They could be the trip pro forma, which has been put together. They could be the staff leave requests, the staff cover requests, whatever's been put together within Operu but then also external documentation. So if it is the uh, uh, PDF, which is the confirmation of the travel you're going on, a copy of the tickets for where you're going, lots of different details can all be collated together. And then I, as a member of staff, can see that information. If I head back here, I've also got all of the duty of care information for our students. So this is confirmed profile information for all of our students. Let's dive into Amy. So if we were on that ski trip, and if I scroll down here, Amy had an asthma attack, I would have all the details of the medication I need to give her along with an action plan. And this is available, not just online as we are now, but using the Opera app, I can have encrypted offline access to this information. So it means you can manage your whole trips, all of your extracurricular activities and all of that duty of care information in one place. This also leads me to one of the other things which staff have to fill out a lot of paperwork for as well as being able to take a register for the students be able to send message be able to access other forms like passport details we have this student logs staff have to fill out lots of bits of paperwork on behalf of students whether that's instant reports for house points or for think or for student interviews as part of onboarding um, but more commonly, this is used for things like injury reporting. So I've got duty of care over a group of students. Instead of filling out a paper bumped head report, I can come in here. I can add a new log for Amy. I can choose Amy as the student and I can fill in various bits of information. What, what injury occurred? Where it happened? What was the treatment that was provided? And then that's going to go through a series of approvals. In this case, it's going to go to our school nurse who's going to decide whether to inform the parents, can take a PDF of this and inform the parents in that way. So any of that kind of student information which you need staff to fill out, they can do it through the system and then it ties back to that student in the back end of the Operu system. OK, we've seen how staff can complete any form or any part of the workflow really easily and how those forms will move through a school. Now I want to show you how easy it is to create these forms and this workflow. I'm gonna switch over to our school. Now, this is the administration side of the Opera system. As an administrator, you have lots of tools and options in this setup. These are designed so you can decide exactly what data, questions and forms a member of staff or for that matter, a parent or student sees and at what time. At the moment, we're in our student view. Everywhere that you see this cloud with an arrow, that is a sync with, uh, that is a sync with your MIS. I know there were some questions coming in on different MI MIS and how we integrate with them, but 
where we've got our cloud and our arrow, that's a sync. So all of our students pull in, all of our groups pull in. And if I come over to our staff side, all of our staff pull in as well. So if they're a member of staff in your MIS, they'll come through, they'll sync with Operu, and then you'll be able to send them forms and things like that. We also have a series of groups within Operu. So different staff are members of different groups. These can be created based on what they've filled in. So if I'm a member of staff and I've completed training module 1.3, I might be in one group. If I then complete training module 1.4, I then go into another group. The groups are also used to create those workflows. So I gave the example earlier on where I'm a school business manager within my school. If I leave that school as the school business manager, I might be on, in Sarah's case, 80 different forms and processes. So rather than having to change the individual person on all of those forms, we change the person in the group and it redirects those, redirects those forms to that right person. So we have our staff, we have our groups, and it's worth saying as well, if I go into a member of staff, each member of staff has their own digital filing cabinet, which contains all forms which are filled in by them or on behalf of them. So you can see all of a star, all of a member of staff's forms and details all in one place. Let's head back to our staff view and let's create a form and a workflow, really simple one for staff leave. I come in here to our form setup and I can add a form. Four different types of form I can start, parent, student, staff, or a public form, depends who we want to send it to, but I'm going to start a staff form. Four different ways we can do it. We can start from a blank form. So if I hover over different types of blank form, they're used for different things, but to be able to manage all of those different forms and processes within the system, we can duplicate something we've created before. So duplicate a uh, something we created last year or a different version of the same thing, or we can use templates, either templates which have been set up within your school or one of Operu's best practice templates. Across all of those different areas, we've got about 200 different best practice templates for all sorts of things. On our staff side, we've got all of the different areas we've been talking about from instant reporting, HR, policies, additional data, finance, IT, trip management, all sorts of different things. But let's find some staff leave forms as a sample, as a template. I'm going to use our request form sample. Now we're into our form builder. We can come in here and customize this form to be whatever we need it to, but I'm going to make some simple customizations. Let's give it, uh, let's call it staff request form webinar. We can update our letter at the top. This is what this form is for. And then we're into our form builder. Because it's a, a template, it's already put in some specific for, some specific questions for me, but I can come in and edit and change these. I can remove parts of questions. I can remove whole questions. I can drag or reorder where those questions are. I can also decide whether this is required or whether it is for office use only. Office use only means that as an administrator, you can fill in information. In this example, you might want to say whether it's paid or unpaid. As the member of staff filling it in, I don't fill in that information, but as an administrator, I can come in and update that information. So it keeps all that information in one place. Let's say we're happy with all of these questions and they're all required. We can remove a question if we want to. We won't ask them to attach a doctor's certificate, but we've got an acceptance down at the bottom. Now, as I said earlier, you can customize this to be anything you want, any details you want within the system. So we've got a series of different question blocks here. If I hover over the question block, it will tell me what that question type is from really simple things like multiple choice and single choice questions through to more complex things, appointment times for limited space, adding attachments, tables and multi-column lists for your risk assessment, putting in a body image for our instant reporting, attachments, payment requests, anything you could possibly want in there. But let's add a simple yes, no question. Is this paid or unpaid? Spelling is awful and we'll keep it as yes or no. Actually, let's change it to paid 
unpaid and we can drag that question up so it's above the signature. Now I've set this up that this is the per, the member of staff filling it in will have to fill in that question and then we decide who it goes to. Either it can be drag and drop so you choose who goes into that form, it can be sent to anybody, it can be sent to a specific group which you've already set up or it can be using filters. So because you've filled in this form or because you've given us this answer you are then sent this specific form but let's make this available to everybody and save then we need to create a workflow i'm going to make this a really simple workflow we're just going to add one stage in here which is school business manager approval we're going to select our group which is the school business managers which has only got me in it as a group and we're going to save so what that means is when this form is filled in, it goes to the, the school business manager to approve or reject. We've then got various settings in here, um, but I'm just gonna enable this, make it go live now. And then we get to our triggers. We said earlier, triggers are based on any data which comes into the system. You can use that data to do other things. Let's show you one very quick example. So, um, is this paid or unpaid leave? We're going to choose a rule based on it being paid leave. We're going to send an email and we're going to send an email to any address. We're going to send an email to our support team at my school. Paid leave saying uh, let's use some of our placeholders. We will say that uh, profile name has applied for paid leave and we'll create that trigger. So then what happens is based on somebody applying for paid leave, somebody else gets an email to say that they've applied for paid leave. Could be that you need someone to check details, check whether they've still got paid leave, check other people whether they need cover. Whatever you need to happen off the back of it, you can create these series of triggers up to the extent that Sarah had with that huge COVID uh, ready form with all of these different bits of information. Now, we've saved that form and straight away, if I come back to that member of staff and we come to our form library, that form is now available to me. I can come and start that form and start that workflow. So it's really quick and easy for you to be able to build out these forms and send them through that specific work throw, workflow through your school. When that information is completed, all of it comes into this, our form library. Give it a second, there we go. All of this comes into our form library and the form library is where you can uh, where you can analyze this data, you can go into individual forms and um, who submitted what forms at what stage they're at and view all of this data. You can also create different uh, graph, different spreadsheets, export that information to share with other people. I'm aware we're coming up to the end of our hour and I appreciate some people might need to drop off. Um, we do want to jump back onto a couple of questions, but um, before I do that, um, I just want to say that really the the key to this is simplicity. It has to be really simple for you to be able to set up, to be able to create create this different content and simple because it removes that manual chasing of